All right, so welcome to the first video in the Blender for Blogs video editing series. And so this is a whole video series where I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, the very video you're watching right now or you're seeing here in the corner. Um, now the sound isn't playing, it's just a preview of what um, I've created that I'm going to teach you how to do. If you want to watch this full promo video that I that I created, you can uh, watch it. I'll put a link to it in the description. You can go there and see what all we're going to cover. So in this video, I'm actually going to be showing you uh, the setup that I use in Blender for optimal video editing, in, at least in my opinion. Of course, everything here is completely optional, so you don't have to do this, but this gives you some ideas of maybe how you can speed up your workflow. I've also created a video editing cheat sheet uh, showing all of my setup plus a list of all the shortcuts that I'll be using for video editing, and you can get it by going to the Blender for the blenderfrenzy.com homepage and uh, you'll find it over on the right sidebar there. Now I do want to mention before I get started I've created two of these setup videos. Uh, this is the advanced version for people who are more familiar with Blender. I'm not going to go into a lot of explanation of the things I'm changing here um, so if you actually want to see a more detailed version of the video editing setup where I do explain everything and I, uh, I'm doing and I explain why, check out the setup video I did for the beginners, and I'll leave a link to that as well. So with that said, let's get started here. So we're going to go over to Blender. When you open up Blender, it's going to look like this, of course. I'm going to go over to our layout, uh, video editing layout, and then I'm going to make a copy, and I'm going to rename it. Just video editing, just for Justin, um, just video editing, that's all. We're just video editing. <laughs> and then I'm going to collapse this area into this area and the bottom area into the top area up here. I'm going to click sequence or an image preview here. And I'm going to open up this, uh, duplicate this here. Change this to the user preferences. And basically we're just going to go down the tabs changing things on the user preferences. The first thing I'm going to change is the global scene. I'm going to check that. And what that does is it's going to lock the scene. So if you have multiple scenes, it's just going to lock that and um, it won't change if you change your layout. So you can change all through all of your layouts. The scene doesn't change. Next one is editing. I'm actually not going to change anything here yet, um, but I just want to show you where the undo steps are. So you can uh, make this higher or lower if you want. I think you can make it higher. Yeah. So um, I just want it on the default of 32. Input tab, I'm going to change select with and I'm going to click left because I like selecting my strips with the left mouse button. Um, I'm more of a left click select kind of guy but if you like the right click select by all means keep that uh, it's entirely up to you and uh, we have em emulate numpad here you can check that if you have a smaller laptop and you don't have the 10 key with the separate uh, numpad um, and then what that does it's going to it's going to do all the same functions uh, with your number pad uh, or sort of the number row on top of your keyboard um, that you would do with the 10 key so it's just basically emulates that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the Blender shortcuts, the inputs for those shortcuts. Now, the first thing you can do is if you are coming from Maya or 3ds Max, you can actually just choose those um, uh, keyboard shortcuts if you're familiar with that. Um, I'm going to keep this on Blender and then I'm going just to change some of them individually. The first one I'm going to change is Play. And where here says play animation, we have Alt A, uh, and I don't like that because it's too slow, too too many buttons, too too many buttons. <laughs> and so I'm going to click that, and I'm going to press spacebar because I think spacebar is a nice toggle for that. Now the Shift Alt A is going to be play in reverse, and you can see that by uh, opening up the drop down box, and it says play in reverse right there. So um, I'm going to click that and do Alt and hold Alt and hit spacebar. And we have Alt Spacebar. So we've got Spacebar for Play and Pause and Alt Spacebar for Play and Reverse. Next thing I'm going to change is the Search because the Spacebar used to be Search and I don't have that function anymore since I changed it. So I'm going to click that, press the dash key uh, right next to the zero on the top number row. 
the next thing I want to change is how to hide strips. So it's actually called mute. So I'm going to type in mute. And um, I'm actually not going to change how to hide them. So I'm going to change how you unhide things. So Alt H is unhide. Again, it's a little bit um, kind of a, a strange combination. So I'm just going to select that. I'm also going to press H there. Now I wish that would just toggle between the two. And maybe if you know a way of that working where it can toggle between the two, please let me know because that would be awesome. But uh, the workaround that I found here is to just uh, open up the drop down box and then click press and then choose double click. So now we have double H is to hide, unhide and H is to hide. So that's, I found that to be really quick. Uh, the next thing I'm going to change, I'm just going to click the X there to go back to the normal and I'm going to scroll down where it says sequencer, open up that and then sequencer global. And this is a little bit of an advanced thing. You don't have to do this, but what I'm going to change here is the select all strips to the right and all strips to the left. Now you can see where the shortcuts are up here. These don't have any shortcuts, so I actually have to add them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click add new, open up the drop down box and then type sequencer dot select, hit enter. And now I have a little bit more options here. But before I change those options, I'm going to change the keyboard shortcut to shift, hold shift, and then do the bracket. So I've got our bracket um, plus the shift key. And then for the options, even though they're grayed out, you can actually still select this where it says left slash right, select none, and then choose right. Because I want the right bracket to select all strips to the right. I'm going to check linked time. And now if I go over here to select, Voila, all strips to the right now has a shortcut, shift, bracket, right bracket. So we're gonna do the same thing, but with the left. So we're gonna do add new, and then open up the drop down here. We're just gonna copy this and paste that into here. Select this, shift, left, bracket, change this to left, select linked time, and just like magic, we have shift, uh, right bracket, shift, left bracket, selecting all strips to the right or to the left. So moving on, next tab is add-ons. Just going to type in node and select the node wrangler add-on. Over on themes, I'm not going to actually change my theme, but if you like to, just so you know, you can actually change Blender's theme, its look. But I'm actually just going to select it to the reset to the default theme. Um, next thing is file. Now, I'm not going to change anything here now. Last tab is the system tab. And the, there are two things I want to point out. The first one is the Cycles Compute device. Um, now, I am using a laptop and I do not have a GPU. That's why this says none. But if you have a GPU, make sure you select that here because it's going to help uh, cut your render times down. So. Uh, rendering with your GPU device. Uh, the next thing I'm going to change is the sequencer memory cache limit. Uh, I'm going to change this from 1024 to just to times 2, 2048. And uh, I have 8 gigabytes of memory, and um, that's what I like to put there. I'm going to se select save user settings, and that is all for the user preferences. Next is the properties panel <clears throat> now the properties panel I'm going to change um, this is a really cool thing I just learned by accident recently it's awesome but if I um, select this I can open and close um, that's not the thing that I re realized but if you are closing it uh, so you start at the top here you close it but you don't let go so you hold down your left mouse button and then drag and that if you drag over, when it hovers over all of them, it closes all of them. I thought that was the sweetest thing. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. And same thing with you opening it. So when you start to open it, if you hold it down and then drag up, it'll open all of them. I just thought that was awesome. So we're gonna close all of them and I'm gonna rearrange them. Now to rearrange them, you just uh, grab this handlebar. I'm gonna do post-processing. I'm going to grab that and I'm gonna move all the way to the top. Um, and then s grab this output here and move that right under dimensions. And that is the order I like. We're only going to be using these four. And then with our output, we're going to add a, a fifth one down there. But that'll happen later. 
All right, so post-processing, the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck compositing because the first thing we're going to be using is the sequencer. Um, and uh, then for render, um, I'm not going to change anything here. This is just for our renders. Uh, single frame, and uh, all frames in range, and then our audio. Uh, dimensions, I'm actually going to keep this here. My videos are 1920 by 1080, and then I'm going to make this 100%. <clears throat> The frame rate I'm going to keep just as it is. Uh, it's actually going to change uh, to match the video of the first video that I import. So I'm not going to worry about that. Close that. For output, I'm actually going to keep this here, but I'm going to change my directory. So I'm going to actually navigate to my Blender directory. And I'm going to make a renders folder and then select accept. Now I have a renders output folder. Uh, I'm going to uncheck overwrite for now, keep that checked, uh, everything's fine there. Um, I'm going to change this to FFmpeg, and when I do that, another uh, little category opens up encoding. I'm going to open that, presets, H.264 or H.264 and MP4, change the medium quality to perceptually lossless and medium speed to ultra fast. Uh, audio codec, I'm going to change to MP3 and leave the bit rate to 192. So that is, I think, all for the properties panel. Now I'm going to resize this down to about there. I think that's good. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is change this no sync down here in the timeline to AV sync. Go to frame one. And I'm going to control S to save it in our Blender folder. And I'm going to title it Video Editing Default 01. Enter, save Blender file. OK, so I want to add two more custom layouts. So I'm going to go up here, click the drop down, go to Compositing, uh, make a copy. And I'm going to rename this to O2 Just Compositing. And this is uh, where we're going to be removing our green screen and uh, maybe a little color correction and stuff like that. So I'm going to change just a couple things here. I want to uh, swap these two windows. Uh, so in order to do that, I'll hover over this ridge, hit Control, click and drag over into this window with the mouse button. You see that little icon there. Let go. They have just swapped. Um, now you can do this with any area. So if I uh, hover over this, Control, click and drag into this area, those two areas swap. So hover, control, click and drag. For this area, I actually want to change this to the video sequence editor and then select the middle button here where it says image preview. Click that. And that's just going to show us our image preview from our sequence editor. This window can stay the same. Um, the next thing I want to do is make sure that this timeline goes all the way across the bottom. And we can't just click and drag now because remember, we have to have the borders um, be the same size. And so the border ends here with our timeline. So in order to fix that, I'm just gonna click and drag another one of these up and line that up there. And same with this one, click and drag here. Now, uh, I'm just gonna demonstrate sometimes when you're clicking and dragging these out, they don't actually automatically line up for some reason. Um, if that happens, just let go. And then uh, you might have to adjust both of these here a little bit, like say here and then, and then maybe here, and then they'll line up eventually. So um, just in case that happens. And the way you know that they're all matching is that if you move one of them, then they all move. So that's how you know. And now we can drag this into this area and this into this area. And now our timeline goes all the way across the bottom, just like we want it to. Now, um, the properties panel over here is not um, set up the same. Remember, we reordered um, some of these things here, so post-processing on, th on the top. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here, um, because for some reason in different layouts, it doesn't um, match, and I don't know why, but uh, post-processing, I'm gonna move back up to the top, Output under dimensions and encoding under output, just like that. That'll be just fine for now. And now I'm going to add one more custom layout from the UV 
editing layout. So I'm going to make a copy, 03, just, and I'm going to call this rendering, rendering. And this is what we're going to use for our render preview. So I'm going to collapse this window into this area, or this area into this area. Then I'm going to click and drag and pull up a timeline. So I'm going to change this to timeline. And then if I hover over here and hit the N key, in for Nancy, um, then I'll close that properties panel. And then I'm going to drag out a properties editor. So drag out a new area, change this to properties. And again, we're going to have to reorganize um, this here. So post-processing on the top, output under dimensions, and encoding under output, just like that. Perfect. All right, last thing. Uh, under render, we have display as image editor. Now, what that means is um, the image editor is going to show up in any of the uh, windows here that were last active. So if I come over here and I click render, um, it's going to preview that um, uh, render process in whichever window was the last active. You could you could also do, I mean, it's, it's up to you. Um, you can do uh, the image editor. If you do new window, a new window pops up. But the reason I don't like that is because it doesn't have a timeline. And so uh, that's why I created this timeline down here. Um, and you can also do full screen, whatever. I'm going to click Keep UI, and basically what that's going to do is nothing. So if I'm on uh, my video editing layout, uh, you're not going to see anything rendering. You'll see, I think up here you'll see a progress bar, but that's about it. So um, I want to actually uh, use the rendering here for our preview, and then we can see the status of it. We can see how um, far along it is by looking at the timeline, and then we can see our preview right here. So I thought that's just um, the best way to go about doing that. Again, it's all personal preference. But having done all of that, um, I think we are ready. So these are the three layouts that we're going to be using for optimal video editing. So what I want to do is save this again, so Control S, but if I move my mouse away, I haven't saved it. So Control S doesn't just save it automatically. And you can tell by the little star here right after Blender. That means um, Blender uh, has been changed since the last time we saved it. So um, the reason is, is because if I hit Control S, it gives me this dialog box asking me if I want to save over. So I do. But if I just move my mouse away, I haven't done that. I have to actually click that. So Control S and then click to save that. And now you can see that star has disappeared, which means we have successfully saved our video editing default um, layout. Woohoo! All right, so let's get to it. Let's get to some good optimal video editing. See you in the next video.